Hi, I'm Devin Dean, Content Director here at ProjectManager.com. In today's whiteboard session, I'm going to cover the spectrum of contracts so that you can better pick the right commercial vehicle to engage with your suppliers. Now, we have basically five contracts that are available for us to use, five different types of contracts, and they range from those that are very high risk to the buyer to those that are a lot more lower risk for the buyer. The first one we'll start out with is the one that's unfortunately most pre prevalent out there in the IT industry and in construction, and unfortunately, it presents also the highest risk to you as, as a buyer, and that's the cost plus percentage of costs, otherwise known as time and materials. Now, in that type of a contract, what you're doing is you're agreeing with your seller or your partner how much the cost of the project is going to be, agreeing on what a profit margin, a suitable profit margin may be, and then launching the team off to doing their work. And you as a buyer are actually managing the implementation of that project. Commercially, there's nothing that bounds that supplier in, in meeting the original estimates of the, um, of the project that you've agreed together. So it really takes a lot more diligence as you, as a, as a buyer, to make sure that a project comes in on the expected budget. So once again, these are unfortunately the most pre prevalent type of contracts that are out there. Used quite heavily in information technology and your construction projects. The next one we have is a cost plus a fixed fee. This one's a little bit better on a buyer side in that you are agreeing a, a cost structure with your supplier and you're also agreeing a fixed fee for them to get rewarded once the contract is done. Now, they're going to get the same fixed fee whether or not that project comes in under budget or over budget. So doesn't necessarily incent them to run the project at a lower cost um, than what you've anticipated, but certainly you as a buyer, it does insulate you from complete um, cost blowouts. This one is really good for mostly research projects. So let's say you as a buyer and the seller comes in, you're not really sure the, the final destination of that research project. You might agree on a sum of money that you have in your budget and a margin that you'll give to your supplier or the research analyst who's going to do the work for you. So these, once again, are best suited for the research type projects. The next, pro next type of contract that we have is a cost plus an incentive fee. Now this one is actually geared so that the seller, if they work together with you as a buyer to get that project in under budget, they then, um, in a pre-agreed share ratio, get an extra bit of an incentive for hitting that project under budget. So let's say, as an example, you've got a $100,000 project. You agree that the, what their, um, their profit's going to be, and then you also agree a share ratio. So let's say on a $100,000 project, you're going to agree with them a 10% margin, so they're going to get 10% profit on that $100,000 cost, and then you'll agree on a ratio of sharing the difference between the total estimated budget and what it actually came in on if it in fact goes under budget. So let's say as a seller I'm bearing, I don't know, 75% of the risk and as a seller I'm bearing 25% of the risk. So it's a, uh, um, a three quarters to one quarter ratio. And let's say that be between you as a buyer and a seller that project comes in at $80,000. You'll split the $20,000, um, 75% to you as a buyer and 25% to the seller. So that you'll, you'll split that $20,000 in that fashion so that the seller will get their profit. So they'll get the $80,000 to cover their cost. They'll get the $10,000 profit, so $90,000. And then they'll get to split the, the, um, the remainder, the difference between the end cost and um, what you anticipated it to cost, that $20,000. So they actually do quite well out of that. But you also do quite well as a buyer because you're getting that project in under budget. This one is really good for prototypes. So let's say a, a, a government institution wants to produce a, a, um, a, an aircraft and they want to do a, a prototype before they go into full production. That's what these types of projects are really good for, doing a prototype. The next type of project is one that you don't see. These, com these contracts you don't see a lot of. These are the fixed price incentive ones. It's because they're very complex to manage your manage and administer. When you're going into these um, types of projects, generally they're very long term. So you might be setting up, for example, um, getting some goods manufactured overseas in Thailand or Vietnam or China and, it, and you're going to have a long three year run of those particular products. Um, with, the, with the manufacturer that you're engaging with, you might want to engage them on a fixed price incentive project because it is such a long duration 
as the, as the supplier, they have the ability to improve their operational efficiency along the term of that contract, thereby maximizing their profit, maintaining the quality, and giving you the goods that you need. So once again, these are very long, useful for long-term type projects. And the elements that are um, included in these fixed price incentive ones is the target price, Okay, so you're also going to have your target price, you're going to have your, um, your profit, agree that up front. Once again, you also agree a, uh, any sort of price ceiling, so not to exceed. And again, a share ratio similar to what we did in the cost plus incentive fee. So. Pardon my writing here, but basically it's you've got your target cost, your target profit that you've agreed with your um, between the buyer and the seller, what your price ceiling is, so a not to exceed limit, and a share ratio. And it, you engage and you operate this project in a very similar way as you do your cost and incentive fee. The only difference is this price ceiling here. So as a supplier, if, um, if our costs go above a certain level, m the buyer's not going to pay any more money to me for that. So that's sort of another method for the um, buyer to insulate themselves against the risk of cost blowout and um, it's something certainly that you need to manage if you are the seller. Now the last type of project is also one that we do see um, quite a lot of and it's your basic fixed price project. In a fixed price project what's really different about that as compared to the other types of projects that you're engaging on you really have a good handle on what it is you want. You might have a complete um, design specification um, you know, there's really nothing else to be worked out in your product that you're going to bring to market or your project that you need to complete. And so as, as, a, as a supplier, that supplier can, per, can hand on heart give you very, very firm quotes on how much it's going to take for them to, um, to produce what you want in your project. And with that, they are bearing all the risk. So they will include within their fixed price not only the cost but also their margin and provide to you as a, um, as a buyer the total cost of that project. And no matter what happens on that project, so long as the scope doesn't change, they have to honor the commitment to that firm, that, that, that price that they're giving to you. So as a buyer, this is my lowest risk type of commercial vehicle. And as a seller, it's my highest risk. I certainly need to make sure I know I've done those projects, types of projects before, and I know exactly what the client wants. So these are good for when you know your firm scope. And your known requirements. So once again, you've got five basic types of contracts that you can use to appropriately match the project that you have to deliver. It's really important that you choose the right contract to get the commercial construct around the buyer and seller's behaviors, which is bound by that contract. For other project management tips and tricks, and to try out our software, come sign up at projectmanager.com.